Hello, welcome back to Ben Sushi Recording. In this episode, I'll be sharing with you uh, my creations, this procedural kind of like a cult temple. I'm just joking. This is actually just a water reservoir underground. You might actually have this in your city. Um, in Sydney, they actually have one. It's a very strange um, structure. Um, I think they built it so if just in case the city is floating, they will actually they will be able to keep some waters underneath. Um, some actually goes pretty deep, but it looks uh, yeah, it looks kind of like a cult temple or something like that underground, and mostly it's empty, but it's pretty cool architecture. And yeah, I made something like that here using Sketch of Notes in Blender. If you look at the notes, it looks it might look a little bit scary. It's not too bad. It's actually pretty basic and simple. Um, this tower is actually just repeated over, and the top and the bottom is actually just mirror. I could I could always separate each and every pole because they're just like a mesh instance. Um, although they are they are actually like a real instance, not real objects mesh instead of just instance. If you have many of them in the real scenes, you probably want them to be instance with a little bit of variations. Let's actually just dig through. So so you have two output, right? And then I have symmetry for the top and the bottom. And let's check it out. Okay, I have this thing that I can move ups and down. Here I have actually a ring. I start with the ring that I can, and I flip the normal and I solidify, and so I can actually adjust the thickness. So the idea is to make this kind of pole, and I can always replace the ring with anything, like for example, plane. So it's can be simplified uh, for example all I need to do is just to plug it to this flip normal I tap V and after I flip the normal let's plug this in, in there so we have uh, yeah we have that I can adjust the X and the Y so they are all each and every pole is nicely plugged into the face of the surface. Okay, so that's first. That's a and the one that's been solidified with a thickness. So the the floor and the ceiling is there, and all I need is just all I did next is just to symmetrize the mass top and down. Now that's the bottom part. How about the top part? So we have a lot of uh, interesting things happening, um, but it's just to make the pole basically. So I started actually with just a cylinder, and select the top of the top part of the cylinder. So this is the cylinder. I can adjust the cylinder efficiency as well. I can make it rounded or polygonal as I want I could also randomize it if I want to yeah something like that you know so from that cylinder all I need is um, all I did was to extrude the top part the bottom part is just the mirror of it, so it's actually really quite simple. This extruded region have multiple uh, subdivisions that I can adjust. Um, so because this is okay, I think the most complicated part is probably here: extrude region with multiple extrusions. This receive multiple matrices, multiple transform. So here I have some weird thing happening. 
just basically to get that curve. Let me try to make a little bit more sense. If I could make like a, some kind of mushroom like that. This thing, so I can have more or less subdivisions. I'll leave it to five. And what else here? Okay, so that's that's actually the height of the original cylinder. So this parameter apparently can be adjusted, but I need to adjust the floor and the ceiling as well. But I I like the this part actually the if we have a number here maybe 10, 10 random number, I could actually plug this into the 10 random number on the parallel, so we can have some kind of random design on the cylinder. Yeah, I think this part is pretty cool. The rest of them, you know, it's just a, just a mirror top and bottom. Okay. And after I extrude the region, all I need, all I did was symmetrize the mass and then drop, vector drop. This is actually not very important, and then I just combine it. So it's actually not that complicated. It's pretty simple, and but it's a uh, it can be useful. Um, that's the thing. And sometimes, okay, this is like two mesh together, right? In Blender, of course, you can do the instancing. You can merge them together. Um, I don't know, merging using modifier is slightly tricky, but if you are using something like Fairchop, you can use something, uh, object ID out. So after the, after you got the final mesh, you generate it. This guy actually can be combined together. If you do it manually, you use list join and then, you know, like vertices goes into vertices, polygon goes into polygon, and then you you output a new object there's a combination of the two so and I believe we can just merge it so it's become a single object and once this is a single object you can you can do modifier like normally so you can do like a remesh modifier etc because it's a single object if you want to do this a little bit faster here with object ID out select both of them and then shift a list or actually just join there's a macro that can connect can connect this output um, in this case we have vertex normal so we just jump it to join one and three so this is what we got after this guy we can use mess join And as a result, we should have this. It's connecting, it's actually joining the first and the, the third one. So we, in this case, it's the fourth one, polygon. This is what we should have. <coughs> polygon, right? It's correct, but I think there might be a bug here occasionally it's actually complaining for this is I just it's not updating properly so for this and for this polygons and polygons combine them together and should should get something here I think this one is having a problem could be a bug there it works it works on this guy it should work so this can use remesh modifier because the unit size is pretty big the remesh needs to calculate the holding 
I think remesh also need to calculate a, a better value depending on the size of the scene. So basically we combine these two and we should get result here. Remesh value should be one or two, I guess. Oh well, it's taking too long time. So anyway, that's pretty much um, a procedural reservoir temple. Uh, you can create procedurally. I didn't make the this is the, the the actual water and reflection is actually really cool, and uh, actually the the details like the brick etc. That could be procedural. The pipe. Um, sometimes it makes this kind of arc. It's a it's a basic architectural design, but still it's quite interesting. It's like underground temple, like I say. Okay, this might be frozen, but anyway. So that's how I would create it using SketchUp. Could be simplified in the future, but. Thanks again for tuning in, and I'll see you next time. Thank you. Bye. Oh, it's completed. See? This should be 2 or something, so it's less resolution. Uh, anyway, yeah, you can, after you do this, you can do displacement, etc. It looks like underground, unusual design. Alright? So, there you go. Thanks again for tuning in, and I'll see you next time. Thank you. Bye.